This here is an Apuntia. There are many, many species of Apuntia. For example, one of them is prickly pear. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of that. Now, this has a few different uses. These fruits here, these get uh, kind of a reddish color. Some are different. Some get purple on different species. But the fruit is edible. On the inside, there's like a real, a real fleshy texture to them. They have seeds, which do not bite down on the seeds because you will, uh, you will break your teeth. You can grind them into a flower, though. They are edible. But the, the fruit itself is delicious. It's very sweet. Um, even the pads here, you can, you can get in there and slice them open. You can eat the whole thing, but I recommend peeling the, the outer layer of skin off. It's very, very tough. But if you get inside there and get into the, the fruit or the, the meaty texture on the inside, it's kind of slimy. It can be used topically on, you know, cuts or wounds antiseptically. And it, uh, it's kind of an acquired taste. But go ahead and cook it up or eat it raw. Totally fine. And then another thing, these spines here, which can definitely hurt if you stick yourself with one, those can be used to make fish hooks. That's what I use them for, uh, possibly maybe making a little spear of some sort to skew some insects or whatnot. But to get these little spines off, there is, if you look close enough on here, don't know if I can get in there, but there is little spines on here. Even the fruit, there's little spines, and those suckers hurt, so definitely spray it with water or burn them off. Burning is the best way but you can get them off with like a wet cloth, taking a wet cloth over them and rubbing it around down there. It'll get all them little fine hairs off and they, uh, they're they definitely not fun to get in your fingers because they get in there and then when everything you touch it just irritates it until it finally goes away. I heard lime juice can dissolve it or some type of citric acid. Just a refresher from my beach edible video. Um, even out in the bush here, you can find the same thing, crowfoot grass, that I showed you you can find at the beach. And like I said, you just take these, rub them in your hand. When you're done, you blow, and you're left with the seeds. Don't blow too hard, you blow them all off, but it'll get rid of that husk that's on the seed. And it's all over around here. You can see all of it here. So gather some of that up and make yourself some bread. Crowfoot grass. This here is a Biden. These flowers, white petals. You can eat the petals here. Those are edible. And these little seeds right here. These, if you crush them up, they become antiseptical. Okay? So if you ever find this plant, you can eat the flower petals. Uh, young leaves, young tender leaves can be eaten. And the little seeds that they give off here I have antiseptical properties. So if you get a cut or a wound, you can use this to put on it to help it heal up. And that's a Biden. You'll find a lot of this growing out here. This is called Smilax or Greenbrier. There's a few different kinds, common greenbrier, bullbrier. Uh, they're, they're, all, they're all fine. Bullbrier, I heard, is the best to use the roots. And what you do is you can eat the young tender tendrils which are right here. See that there? That's a tendril right there. And these young young tender leaves, okay? These are all pretty old. You can eat the young tender ones as a salad green. The roots can be used to make a powder to use in soups as a thickener or you can make jelly. And you gotta mash them down and just look up the recipe on the roots on these and you just mash them down and it turns into a red powder kind of the same as how you process cattail and another use for these besides edibility is I make baskets with these I don't usually use the whole thing I usually just use a few pieces as my uh, spokes to weave the basket around I use muscadine grapevine to do the rest of the basket but you could make a whole basket out of these. I made a pretty cool uh, chandelier type thing with this. And I'll show you that once I make my baskets. I'll put a video up on that. 
but this is a uh, common green briar or smilax and be careful it does have thorns on it here's one of my favorite trees shrubbery you're gonna find out here this is wax myrtle these leaves have a very strong smell okay they're used I use them out here for mosquitoes and fleas and ticks and such this with American Beauty Berry makes a good mosquito repellent. I mix the two. You can check my video out on the uh, essential oil I made with the two and mixed them. I'm actually using it today as a mosquito repellent. Uh, these leaves, you can grab about 10 leaves, dry them out, and make them into a tea. You don't have to dry them, but I recommend it. And then you can also use these leaves as a seasoning like a spice works good on game or fish you just dry them out crush them up and put them in your in your spice bottle it's similar to bay bay seasoning is the best way to describe it it's called southern bayberry also uh, the berries that grows on here there's none coming in on this one yet I'll show you some here I know there's some coming in on some of them they grow right on the stem and you can use those you can you can eat them raw but they have a peppery taste they're more for like seasonings but you can uh, use those to make uh, candles just grab a whole bunch of them boil them down get the wax off and you have a nice scented wax myrtle candle so this is a quite useful plant out here I, I love it it smells great so get to know this one, wax myrtle. Here we go, here's a wax myrtle with a few berries coming in. Like I said, you can pick them and nibble on them for a little flavor in your mouth. The bald cypress you're gonna find in some wet areas. It loves its feet wet. Uh, you might find a pond cypress near ponds. There's a little difference in the leaves. If you look at this guy right here, that shows you that it's a bald cypress. A pond cypress will be frayed all over the place when it's out. It's it's not really flat like that. Like a nice fan, let me show you. Okay, you see how that's just flat? Leaves go on opposite sides. On the pond cypress it's it's just scattered all over, kinda like that. And that that's the biggest difference. And the bark, the bark's a different color. One's brownish and one's grayish. But the bald cypress has a few uses. If you make a decoction of the cones when they're green, you can make a very good blood suppressant. This will stop bleeding. It's one of the best I've heard to stop bleeding. It has it's a natural astringent. You know the water around here is already brackish because of this, and it has tannins in it. The it can be used as a wash this can and it can be used as a gargle or you can swallow it if you have a bleeding stomach but it's it's got some uses to it the bald cypress here and cypress is a good wood to use for a bow drill cypress is a soft wood and that's what you want and that's what they look like here's a look at some bigger bald cypresses you look up that tree see it kind of resembles almost like a Maybe like a pine tree or something. That's what you're looking for for a bald cypress. And I forgot to mention that this bark is good for tinder. See how that scrapes off? That's just my hand. You use the back of your knife. This stuff all riled up. You know, break it up to make some surface area. And there's some tinder. Another source of food out here the muscadine grapevine. Now there's a few different kinds of these. There are some that have different leaves. I'm going to put a few of the Latin names before I show you this one. You'll see. Uh, there is a difference between the native and the cultivar. This one here is a native because it has one single tendril. Now if that tendril were to fork off then you have a non-native muscadine. The real difference is the tendril and the uh, amount of berries that they produce 
But this is one I use for basket making. Like I said with the green briar, I use that as a spokes and I use this to weave. These leaves can be boiled and eaten. They really don't taste that good, but you can. Obviously younger ones are better, like anything. But the berries, when they're ripe, muscadine grapes are delicious. Uh, muscadine wine is really good. I've had that before. Uh, but this here is your native muscadine grapevine. And here's one of my favorites out here. The American Beauty Berry. Calicarpa Americana. Okay, here's a good look at the bark. Leaves. Okay. It's got those veins. It's got that scaly kind of skin. And these berries, you can see how they cluster around the stem. That's your key identifier. And obviously the neon purple berries, they are edible. You can take them right off here and eat them. They're you know, they really, they really don't have much of a taste. Okay, that's what the insides look like, nice and white, fleshy. Now the berries can be made into a jelly, which I have a video on that you can watch. Or what I'm going to do with these tonight, I'm going to actually make a tea that's high in antioxidants. Now these leaves, I also have a video showing you the wax myrtle that I showed you earlier, plus this made into an oil. Is my mosquito repellent. Now you can also just rub it, wipe it on your skin, spit, make a poultice, rub that all over yourself, and you've got a very, a very effective mosquito repellent actually. And it has a, it has a very distinct smell. Once you smell it for the first time, you'll know that you have these leaves because it's not always going to have these berries. They're around till about late September, maybe beginning of October. But that's, that's it. That's the end of them. They're going to start disappearing. And these leaves also have another special benefit. Once you break them up like this, say you were fishing and you didn't bring your fishing hook or pole, you could throw this in the water. And just like black walnut hulls, they stupefy the fish. So it'll make them easier to catch. They'll float to the top. And that there is the American Beauty Berry. And I will come back with you once I make my tea.